Ping Yong Kim, the president of the World Bank, it's great to have you with RT today, sir. Thank you so much for having me. So you pledged to continue the World Bank's mission to fight world poverty. It's actually a policy which recently became priority for the bank, but a startling 80% of people in the world still live under $10 per day. I mean, do you ever stop and say, wow, I'm fighting windmills? Well, you know, um, uh, I feel that uh, I have the best job in the world. You know, the, the fact that we walk in every day and on the wall of the World Bank uh, states, our dream is a world free of poverty. You know, there, there, there are 80% um, uh, of the world living on less than $10 a day, but there are also 1.2 billion people living on less than $1.25 a day. So the fact that fighting absolute poverty, extreme poverty, uh, conditions that no one should li live under uh, is, I think, one of the great privileges of working for a group like the World Bank Group. But when you think of a world poverty, in general, it's still such an abstract thing. I mean, I know that you've had a remarkable career as a doctor working in the field every day in places like South America, Russia, Siberia. Maybe do you feel that you were more useful than helping directly people than fighting something that's so intangible, you know? Well, you know, um, it's become more and more tangible over time. So, for example, we know now that investing in health investing in education, investing in social protection programs are critical to lay the foundations for the kind of economic growth that will lift people out of poverty. Another thing we know is that every country in the world has to think about how to grow their private sector. You know, this is a real issue here uh, in Russia. Uh, President Putin has said that he wants to improve his business climate and wants to move quickly up the rankings uh, to be among the top 20 um, uh, countries in the world in terms of ease of doing business. Every single country in the world has to figure out how to grow their private sector so that businesses can grow and create the kind of jobs that people want. If you look around the world and, and, and see the kinds of crises that are erupted, uh, especially, for example, in the Arab Spring, those crises were specifically about the lack of jobs, uh, the lack of access uh, to the economy, the, the inability to, to, to feed their children. So we now know a lot about what it takes to lift people out of poverty provide them health, education, social protection, and then figure out ways of having the right kind of fiscal policies, the right kind of monetary policies, grow your private sector. So our message is, while they have to be tailored to each individual situation, uh, is very encouraging in a sense, because we think there is a path for all countries to, to grow their economies, to provide the basics of uh, health education so that, that their people can live productive and dignified lives. Can I ask you something? What were some of your thoughts about World Bank before you became its head? Because it's an organization that's in the constant state of becoming and change. I know that in 2000 you even wrote a book somewhat criticizing the bank. Well, you, you know, this is a, a, it, I'm so glad you said that because very few interviewers actually understand how much the bank has changed. You know, one of my first trips to Washington, D.C. was actually to protest the bank. Um, we were part of a movement called 50 Years is Enough, and at that time we did not feel that the bank was on the forefront of issues like environmental sustainability, gender equality, uh, the importance of uh, access to health care. And over time, as the evidence has grown, the bank has shown that it focuses on data, that it focuses on fact, that it tries to take evidence from the studies, often that they do themselves, that uh, give a clear idea of just what you need to do in order to grow your economy, to provide jobs, and to provide those basic services. So the bank of 20 years ago is very different than the bank of today. Today, uh, I have to say, the, uh, the, the fundamental values and mission of the bank uh, are completely in line with the work that I've done for my entire life. I'm just going to continue with the thought of a World Bank being under permanent pressure mm -hmm. and permanent criticism from left, from the anti-globalists, from the occupiers, I mean, you name it, and it's been going on for decades and decades. It does still have that image of being this vehicle for the United States and for multinationals to increase the grip over the developing countries, developing world. Can you change that? I think it's already changed. Uh, one of the things I did when I came in uh, was to spend most of my first six months walking around the World Bank, uh, both in Washington, D.C., and in the countries that I visited. And I asked them some fundamental questions. Well, who are we? What are we here to do? What are our most fundamental values? And how does it relate to our mission and our strategy? And what I found was that there was a deep, and there is, a deep vein of passion for fighting poverty. You know, we have some of the brightest.